what's up? I'm KBHD here. It's always fascinating to see how companies will try new things to separate themselves from the pack. Like, there's a lot of great smartphones out there. There's the Samsungs and the Apples and the Xiaomi's and OnePluses of the world. They all have great performance. They all have pretty solid batteries and overall nice designs and build quality and some solid cameras. But all these companies, they all know how steep the competition is and so they need to find one more thing to give you a reason to buy their phone over the rest. And so that's where I get into the classic feature versus gimmick debate. So there's the high-end flagship smartphone that also zooms in a hundred times, gimmick or feature. The high-end flagship phone that also has a stylus, gimmick or feature. Maybe the high-end flagship phone that also has extra buttons for high-end gaming, gimmick or feature. A lot of the stuff is just up to you to decide. But now enter the Oppo Find X3 Pro. The flagship phone with a microscope? And this isn't a review, but this has been now turning a lot of the same gears in my head as I've been playing with this phone about what really makes a gimmick versus a feature. So the Find X3 Pro is absolutely a flagship phone in every measurable way. It's got the Snapdragon 888 chip, 12 gigs of RAM, there's 256 gigs of fast storage inside, and you've got a pretty decent sized 4,500 milliamp hour battery, and it's all packed in an impressive design. So this entire back of the phone is one seamless single piece of glass which is curved up into this camera module. It's pretty cool and Oppo talks a big game about how difficult this is to do. Something like 40 hours to make a single sheet of glass with this perfect curve. I'd say it's worth it. This is the same reason that I like the S21 series designs. Those phones felt very intentional about embracing the huge set of cameras. This does the same thing, which is very refreshing versus the typical camera bump that kind of just looks like it was stapled to the back of a flat piece of glass. Now, this mirror finish, you know, I probably would have gone with something a little more matte or, or, or satin at least myself. There is a blue version that is like a silk blue. Anyway, this whole body is IP68 dust and water resistant and it's pretty slim, but also impressively lightweight. So it actually, it feels sleek in the hand if you're into that. There's a nice pair of stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos support, which is also nice. And up front is a super high-end display. And that's really nice. So I don't know if you're ready for all these numbers. We already know Oppo's done some pretty great displays in the past. See Oppo Find X2 Pro. Uh, but this is what a great flagship display looks like now in 2021. It is a 6.7 inch diagonal with a bit of a curve around the edges. It's also Quad HD Plus or 1440p, which lands you at about 525 pixels per inch. That is super sharp. And it's a 120 hertz LTPO panel, which means it can actively adjust the refresh rate up to 120 hertz, which saves you battery when you're just reading a web page or an ebook or something like that. Anything that doesn't need higher refresh rate, and it can drop as low as 5 hertz. But when you are actively moving stuff and playing games and scrolling around the UI, the high refresh rate combined with the 240 hertz touch sample rate makes things feel super responsive. So 6.7 inch, 1440p, 120 hertz LTPO. Oh, by the way, it's an OLED too, and a great one at that. So this panel is giving you 1300 nits of peak brightness, one of the brightest on any phone, and that lands it at five million to one contrast ratio it's HDR10 plus certified. It covers 100% of the DCI P3 color gamut. It's great, it checks all the boxes. But let me finish up with the rest of the flagship stuff. The fingerprint reader is underneath the glass, but it's much lower on this phone for some reason. I'm not sure why. Like every other phone I've seen puts it a few centimeters up from the bottom where it's more reachable. This one, like it feels worse. So it's harder to reach. So I'm not sure why it's there, but it's there if you wanna use it. And then there is a neat trick in the software. So a long press on the fingerprint reader can pull up shortcuts to some frequently used apps. And I love that. That is a really good idea for software. And there's a bunch of other nice stuff like that sprinkled here in, as you'd expect, Oppo's Color OS on top of Android 11. And I really like what I've been seeing in Color OS over the past two years. This might be a hot take, but it's risen to near the top of my favorite versions of Android to use period. I think I'd put it right above OnePlus's Oxygen OS. It's come a long way, and actually a big part of that now is how the animations and overall physics of things move around. It's one of those subtle things you notice when you use a lot of different phones, but it's very snappy and smooth and responsive. There's also Google Feed integration on the home screen and some better Google integration with some stock apps like the dialer and messaging. So of course there are still quirks, like there's no quick launch option for the camera, but other than that, it's actually pretty dope. And then of course you can't forget 
the charger included in the box in 2021. You actually gotta say it, but it's a 65 watt fast charger that can get you up to 40% in 10 minutes, which is pretty sweet. But like I said, so many other phones are good now. So sure, this phone is excellent, but that's when you get into the world of unique special features to try to stand out above the rest of the also excellent phones. Sometimes it's kind of tough to tell if something is a gimmick or an actually useful feature or maybe somewhere in between. We'll let you be the judge of that when you hear about them, but I think there are two things worth noting with this phone. So number one, the billion color display. Okay, so we know Oppo's been putting a lot of care into their displays over the years. They're calling this the first billion color smartphone, which is a pretty sexy tagline, but what does it mean? Well, it means it's a 10-bit display. What they're really saying behind that billion color tagline is they have a 10-bit display instead of an 8-bit display. And when you hear that, it might not sound all that impressive, but the math on that is. So for every single pixel on an 8-bit display, there's 256 different color levels, but in a 10-bit display, it doubles that twice to 1024. So an 8-bit display, which is pretty common in a lot of smartphones, can show up to 16.7 million colors, which is awesome. But a 10-bit display can show up to 1.07 billion colors. So there you go, it's a billion color display. But that's not actually the impressive part. There are other 10-bit displays out there in smartphones. The impressive part of it all is that they've created a pipeline from image capture from the cameras all the way through the firmware to the display that preserves that 10-bit color. So that extra color information is super useful in some specific environments. So if you shoot a lot of photos and videos, professionally especially, you'll always take things like the higher bit depth to reduce banding and crumbling and things and like fades and gradients. So if you're gonna be doing a lot of high-level photo and video capture and then manipulation on this smartphone display, this may be something to care about. But I'm pretty confident there's gonna be a lot of people who actually get this phone who never even notice this, especially because it is actually turned off by default. You actually have to go into the display settings and turn this on if you wanna take advantage of the full 10-bit pipeline. So I think what I'm trying to say here is there are other more noticeable great things about this display like a high refresh rate, like the touch refresh rate, like high brightness that you'll notice before 10-bit over 8-bit. But if the question is gimmick or feature, I'm gonna put it in the feature category. It's just a very niche feature, just a very, very small sliver of people who will actually take advantage of that. Okay, then there's the second thing, which is the microscope. So this camera array on the back of the Find X3 Pro is already pretty powerful. It's using a new 50 megapixel Sony sensor for both the main camera and the ultra wide. Love that, and I think that should be done more often. There's also a 13 megapixel telephoto 5X hybrid optical zoom. But that's just this little one in the corner here. This last big one is a three megapixel macro camera with a ring light around it. Now, okay, you know how I feel about macro cameras, but I should clarify, I hate bad macro cameras. Like when you see a like mid-range sort of cheaper phone slap an extra camera in there to look like the more premium multi-camera systems, but it's just a crappy two megapixel macro that they could have spent that money on somewhere else in the phone to make a better difference. I hate that waste of money. That's a bad macro camera. But the idea of a good macro camera, well that, that could be kind of fun. Now this one is actually a 60X magnification lens and the macro bit just means you can get extremely close as far as minimum focus distance. And so this is less of a macro camera and more of a literal microscope. So you open the camera app and switch to microscope and it flips over to that camera. And when you bring that camera one to three millimeters from the subject, basically almost touching it, and it works, it actually gets microscope-like images, which means a couple things. So the area you're capturing is incredibly small, and the depth of field on this lens is super shallow. So this is an F3 lens, and you're, you're literally almost touching the subject, so you gotta spend some extra effort stabilizing everything to actually get a good shot in focus but the photos you get are crazy. I actually just made up this game, so you can play along. It's like a game show. I'm gonna show you the super macro photo, and then you can try to guess what it's a picture of. I'm convinced you're gonna get all of them wrong, or you probably won't know what I'm taking a photo of, but pause it if you need more time. Let's play a little game.
you do? One or two, right? Maybe? I think the dollar bill one maybe was the, the one that more people will get than not. But it's just this, it's so much fun. Look at this. Look at, I just did this earlier just for fun to see if I can get it to, look at that. Do you see the threads on my shirt? That's crazy. It's so much fun. <laughs> okay, so the microscope camera. Feature or gimmick? Okay, so it's still a gimmick, but not all gimmicks are created equal, and this is one of the most fun gimmicks that I've ever seen in a phone. It's awesome. Like, microscopes and macro photography are hard to do well. They're actually kind of expensive to do well. So when they first started showing up in phones, they were usually so trash because they were using a smaller, cheaper sensor, and they would get a cheap lens that doesn't let in very much light. So you have this poor noise performance and not a lot of detail, pretty bad combination and macro photos would look like garbage. But they did that because, well, it's more expensive to make a good macro camera. If you remember the dope tech video I did about the probe lens, which is another crazy macro capable lens, that lens had an F14 to F40 aperture range. But you'd strap that to a much bigger sensor and there's a bright ring light attached to the front of it and this is a $1,500 lens. So this, this microscope camera to me feels like Oppo actually put extra time and effort and money into making a much better than average experience. And it shows. The F3 aperture is interesting, but obviously the ring light, because you get so close to your subject, you cast a shadow on it. So they really thought about a lot of this stuff. Now, if this is gonna go from gimmick to feature, one of the biggest differences between a gimmick and a feature is iterating and keeping going with it, making a new version. Maybe this can benefit from dual aperture in the future, where you have like an F8 version that gets more in focus but that's all getting ahead of myself. This is one of the most fun gimmicks I've ever seen in a phone, and I'm glad they did it. Either way, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.